Today is Tuesday, June the 18th, 2019, Tuesday of the 11th week in Ordinary Time. After reflecting a little more deeply on yesterday's topics of the First Commandment and the false gods in our life, it got me to thinking, too, about how sometimes when we do, in effect, worship these false, false gods, when we do fall prey to making them our gods, they also leave us vulnerable to commit other types of sins. Take, for instance, the Second Commandment. Now, when we take a look at the Second Commandment, we don't always think of it the way I th- believe we ought to. You shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Well, I know that has to do with God. Shoot me. Oh. False idols? No, that was one. And then the Sabbath is three. The Second Commandment. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord thy God in vain. I shall not say the Lord's name in vain. Thank you. So yeah, there are certainly the obvious times when someone has used the Lord's name inappropriately. Every time I hear someone do it, it kind of is like, you know, the hair on my back just stands up and I get all, mm. And of course, when some of these people are doing it, I don't even think that they realize that they're doing it, which would certainly mitigate some of their culpability. And I try never to do that. I was going to say I never do that, but I probably slip up every once in a while. I do it so often, I have to go to confession. Maybe occasionally when I'm driving and somebody cuts me off, but there's nobody else in the car. The way I look at it is, if you truly appreciate the first commandment, and there are no other false gods in your life, then the second commandment would be something that's automatic. So, you know, God has to be Lord of my life. Part of that is he is Lord of my lips, Lord of my tongue, Lord of the things that I say. (laughs) We can't misuse the name of God. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole long history of what basically theologically we mean when we talk about a name. But do remember that from the very beginning, even in Revealed to Moses, the name of God is sacred. I don't think many people appreciate, though, that also the way we use God's name. So we have to be very careful by not just willy-nilly saying God's name in anger or when we're upset. Now, just for a moment before I get into some of the other aspects of using the Lord's name appropriately, there's also the positive side to this commandment, and the positive side to this commandment is the prayerful side, if you will, of invoking the name of God in the beginning of prayer by saying, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then offering your prayer, offering your praise, uniting yourself to God himself. Also on that positive side, we can bind ourselves to another by invoking their name. So a lot of time when a name is shared and used appropriately, that creates a bond between two individuals. Using the name of God appropriately then helps create a proper bond between we, his creatures, and he, our creator. So Scott Hahn, kind of a big name in Catholic evangelism, and he knows a lot of his stuff about the Catholic faith and about the Bible. He breaks down uh, in one of his talks, the Our Father, which has that line in it, hallowed be thy name. And so when we think about the second commandment about, you know, not taking the Lord's name in vain, Now we're kind of adding that positive spin on it, and yes, keeping it holy. St. Paul doesn't make it clear in the letter to the Philippians that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue profess him. All people, whether in heaven, on earth, or under the earth, when the name is invoked, it is a moment of praise. When we say, hallowed be thy name in the prayer, we're asking that God help us to walk holy lives so that way we, in a sense, are worthy of that name and the share in that name. Now, then to go around saying the Our Father and then five minutes later be taking the Lord's name in vain or using other profanities with our lips is just um, a complete irony. That's just a small thing that in the long run can have deep separations for us and God. Now, with that in mind, we always need to remind ourselves that the name of God is holy. As we hear in the psalm, O Lord our God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. I know at times in frustration people invoke the name of God. I always say to them when they do, oh, we're starting a prayer? I mean, that's one of those moments when I get some of the strangest stares back. (laughs) Some people will even look at me and go, no, I'm not praying. 
you know, like I think of that scene in the movie, The Replacements, when one of the other players goes, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And the other player goes, you praise his name, praise his name. Jesus Christ. Praise his glory, Nigel. But there are other things about the second commandment that I think people have forgotten. And among them are things like taking oaths, especially in the name of God. And a special relevance to this commandment is making a false oath, saying that you're going to make this promise in the name of God and then not keep it. I'm going to make the case that the second commandment has a lot to do with establishing our relationship to God. Even to the point of seeing the relationship as part of the covenant we make. And that covenant that we make as Christians is called baptism. In our honoring of the name of God, we also choose a sacred name, if you will. Now, our tradition has always said that when we name our children, we really ought to look for sacred names, saint names. We also make a big thing about choosing an appropriate name for confirmation. You can poo somewhere else and then, then you can come up onto me. I remember reading an article at one time where it basically said, Having a name or having someone else's name or God's name implies a relationship, but also implies that you do have a level of power over that individual. It even went to the point of the Jewish people not even saying the name of God to not invoke any power over him, to, to, to make it seem like they were greater than he. I mean, well, it's common knowledge that people did not use the term Yahweh when referring to God. And instead, they replaced it with the term Hashem, which means the name. Kind of cute to watch him do some of his little dance routines here. It's like he's got a song playing in his head or something, and he's like, yeah. Father Benedict basically threw him on the floor. Wait, what? <laughs> Jump. Oh. Wow, you dropped him. I got you. I wouldn't throw you on the floor. Okay, we're going to fly and not fall. All right? Try that. Okay, getting better. What do you say, one more time? Are you traumatized? Nice! That was not bad. You know, it is interesting how many people out there actually do use all of these little euphemisms to avoid certain curses or taking the name of the Lord in vain. My mother and father also did not believe in cursing, especially with the, the kids around. So my mother would hit the table and say, sugar, sugar, sugar. Son of a biscuit eater, son of a sea cook. And as I said, my father was jumping jihazafits for crying out loud, for Pete's sake, just like what you said. I mean, I tried not to, so I replaced it with like other words, but I gotta learn to use words that just, like I just, just gotta learn to be calm and chill and not just use words in general to display anger because it's not worth it. It's the easiest one. It's the easiest commandment. Thou shalt not, all you have to do is avoid saying God's name in the wrong way. I know, Meshuggah, 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 Nakai. I don't even know what that means, so I hopefully I'm not offending anybody. But I'll make up other things. I say, Ungahoya. I don't even know what that means, but I'll just make up words when something bothers me. It's actually pretty good practice because you still can get your frustration out without having to offend God. He's grinding his beak. Like, it's just like really, it's like teeth grinding. He's getting the step up thing, actually, so I got him to step up onto my finger. Next thing will be, come. Come. Walk. Morning walk. <laughs> come on. 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 Come on.